The most modern craze in woodworking is laser engraving. A year ago when I reviewed the last laser engraver, I had no idea that I was opening Pandora's box. Since then, I have had several emails from different laser engraving companies. Adam Stock came to me a few months ago and said they had something that was three times more powerful. Three times more powerful. So here we are again. Today we'll be reviewing this Adam Stock A30 Pro and I'll be testing the claims that this is three times more powerful than the last one through comparison. Before we start, here's a really important tip I learned from the last laser engraver. When you drop your laser engraver in your online cart, get a bed for it. Unless you've got a workbench that you're not worried about destroying the face of, you'll want something that you can put below the project to absorb the laser. Unlike my last laser engraver, Adam Stock included a thin piece of aluminum that stops direct contact with the laser, but it's not gonna protect your surface from the heat. In order to do that, you'll want a protective panel that fits below your project. The Adam Stock F3 Matrix is their top of the line protection that I got with my machine. But why the F3 Matrix? It uses fewer points and has a safer surface that prevents honeycomb shadows that can form on the back of your projects like the other honeycomb type bases. Instead of the grid, it uses tiny points, like a bed of nails. It also has arms that hold down your stock. As we all know, plywood, especially if it's thinner, is rarely ever flat. Now let me explain why it's important to have these things held down. As we all know, plywood is going to have some kind of bow to it. So the idea to put these arms is not really a bad idea. And the reason for that is that these laser engravers, they have a focus point. So this is a little focus stand and this drops down. And when this sits on top of this, it's at the right focus. So if I have some places that are sticking up, it's gonna be a problem because it's obviously not gonna be in focus. And that's pretty good right there. If you're doing any kind of 3D projects where you'll be using thin plywood, this will be something that really works at holding that down. The bed, the bed was really not easy to put together. It was frustrating. I really don't have a lot of bad things to say about the bed. I think that the arms are a, a great addition to it. It obviously won't work if you're using a smaller piece of plywood like this, but of course you're gonna have more cupping with larger pieces anyway. It would be nice to have a bar that goes all the way across that will get some of these smaller pieces. One thing that I like about some of these other beds is that they're much larger. So the entire laser engraver actually fits on top of it. That makes it difficult for the two to become out of sync with each other. And the ugly? Because this tries to allow as much air under your project as possible to keep things cool, they recommend using a paper placemat to collect any smoke residue. And this makes sense if you've ever used a smoker. If I were going to combat this, I would throw the paper away and I think I'd buy a silicone pie mat instead as it's going to last longer than that paper. A bonus is if you use this really thick silicone mat, it'll give a little bit more of a grip to the bottom of the laser engraver as well as the laser engraver bed, which is really good at keeping things in alignment with each other. As you can see, it's really hard to get this to move. So everything's gonna stay in place when you use this, but let's get on to the testing. With this first test, we'll check to see how deep into the wood each of these laser engravers can travel. I'll be using what came out of the box for each of the machines. The Atom Stock came with an air assist, which I'll be using, the order did not. I'll be using full power or 100% with my speed at 100. I will point out that there are probably about a million different ways to fine tune these machines, and I'm just using very general numbers. Fight. We started out small and it shouldn't come as any surprise that these laser cutters can cut 5 16 and a quarter inch. I guess what really surprised me was the power that the Atom Stack had over the order as far as cutting. It only took one pass to cut each of these pieces of wood, which is really incredible in itself. Both of these cuts look really clean. I would say that maybe even the Atom Stack is a little bit cleaner. That's probably due to the air assist. The 5 16 Walnut really kind of blew my mind. That one single pass compared to four of the order. As you can see with four passes, I was able to make a cut. It's not super clean, but compared to the order, the order didn't even 
break the surface at 20 passes. I'll go ahead and break this piece out. If we look at it, it's pretty dirty. They look somewhat similar, but I think that this one's still a little bit cleaner, the Atom Stack. This is what I wanted to accomplish with the last laser engraver, and it really did it effortlessly in four passes. Amazing. The 916 inch plywood was a disaster for the Atom Stack. The order didn't even manage to make it about three quarters of the way in. I was talking earlier about having a million different ways to set these things, and this is kind of proof of this. If you're really serious about cutting this, you lower your energy and raise your speed and, and do a few more passes. Fast obviously isn't always better. I was really happy with the three quarter inch pine test. This made a nice cut, mostly clean all the way through. The order, not so much. It only took three passes to get through this while, again, I did go 20 passes with the order. So there is a significant amount of power that comes with the Atom stack as far as cutting. This is technically a one and a half inch thick piece of wood. This was eight passes. I might've been able to keep going with it. Obviously, Adam Stack blows the order out of the water. It's got so much power. This also shows that having an air assist is really important. I'm really happy that Adam Stack came with one, but you can always buy one for the order. So that's not really that big of a deal. With the second test, we'll check to see how each machine compares based on actually engraving. I will admit that I went into this thinking that if you had a more powerful machine, you'd engrave much faster. While you can make deeper cuts with each pass, I was informed that due to the mechanics of the actual machine, they don't move faster as they get more powerful, which is a little disappointing. Fight. Keeping in mind that you can't make these things go a whole lot faster no matter how powerful they are, I found that the 6500 speed was a sweet spot between the two machines. If you try to go any faster than that, the machine will try to overcompensate to make up for that speed, which ends up making it a whole lot slower. At 6500, I tried 50, 60, and then at full power. With the 50 setting, you can see that the Atom stack is a little bit more detailed and more clear. I feel like the picture is a little bit darker where it's a lot more washed out with the order. When we jump up to the 60, you can see that the Atom stack is a lot darker. It cut a little bit deeper. Like the 50, the order 60 looks a lot more washed out, but let's go on to the last one, 100. You can see a big difference between the two. While the Atom Stack really carved out and cleaned up the image, it almost has like a 3D look to it, where it'll move as you bend the image. The Order 3, I have to admit, looks a lot nicer. It looks cleaner, there's more detail. Again, if you're looking for that 3D look, you're gonna wanna go with the Atom Stack, but I'm really surprised by how clean this looks. You could probably find a setting that's gonna give you this level of detail. But with the two, I think that the order really shined nicely with the detail. Finally, we'll check to see how each does with engraving steel. I'll be using the logo to my second channel as the design. To prep the steel, I scuffed the surface to the bare metal and added a layer of soot to the top. Steel being shiny doesn't do well unless you add a non-reflective layer. Finally, I left my speed at 20 and my power at 100%. This is at what I think is the highest power for each machine. Fight. At this point, I kind of feel bad doing this test. If we look at the Atom stack, it is just unbelievably clear. The cuts are deep. You can hear the scratching with this. If I go to the order, and again, I do feel bad about this. 
there's hardly anything there. Compare that again with If I zoom in a little bit, it's really, really difficult to see. With the order, I was able to create the markings on my chisel, but I think I went over it five or six times. And they aren't really that deep. I mean, it's good enough that I can see it, but that is remarkably deep. I think in a few more years, we'll be cutting through 16th inch steel. If I'm gonna laser engrave something, the Atom Stack is the machine that I'm gonna to use to do it. These results were certainly very interesting. It really comes down to what you're looking for when you decide to purchase one of these guys. Are you looking for an engraver or something that will cut stock? The latest Atom Stack 33 watt laser is absolutely phenomenal when it comes to cutting thicker stock as well as engraving deeper into both wood and steel. I'm floored by the power that these things have and can't wait to see what they'll be able to do in the future. One of the things that I would really like to see are faster engraving speeds as a full-size image can take hours to produce. In a few weeks, I'll have another review for a couple add-ons to the Atom Stack, but for now, if you'd like to pick up this machine, I'll have a few links in the description for discounts. Thank you so much for watching and tell me in the comments below, why you would be more likely to buy a laser engraver, to cut or to engrave. I'd like to thank my patrons for the support and encourage you to be a supporting member. Thank you. Michelle B, Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Zach Finch, Rich Lightfoot, Tudor the Barbarian, Mike Lornitis, Les N, and Gary G. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. And I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at Make Things with Rob. And remember to keep making things. Bye.